Callie Sullivan joins us live on the show. Callie, good morning to you. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Simon. Hope morning, you're Callie. well. We are very well. Danny Murphy, big fight fan, is with us as well. Good morning. Uh, so, Callie, how did happy, you get how did you get this over? Former Tottenham man on. Oh yes, happy indeed. Man. He's a former Tottenham, mainly Liverpool, but former Tottenham as well. Yeah. How, how did this go over the line then, Callie? That Eubank Junior will fight Connor. Well, it's, I've got I've got to admit, in twenty something years of promoting boxing all over the world, um, this one was pushed by really by forces beyond our control. I mean, it came out, I was in Australia promoting a world title fight. I was on the way back to, uh, connecting in Qatar and I've had my, my mailbox has exploded with journalists saying, oh, the fight's confirmed. And I'm thinking, what fight is confirmed? At this stage, we were looking at three different options for Junior. And um, yeah, we'd had, we'd had a, a brief chat, Eddie and me, and B went off to the States. I went off to Australia. We said we'd, we'd sit down and when we were back, um, but then, you know, it was front covers of magazines. It was back pages of papers based on sources. I still don't know where these sources came from. There wasn't a single, there wasn't even an offer from my side or from Eddie's side. Um, so it was, then it really started. And um, <laughs> I put out there in November last year when, when Connor won his fight, I said in the not so distant future, I put up my Twitter page, it was a bit of a, a late night post, I must admit, but it was, it was, I said, look, I think one day it will get made. When? I don't know. Um, and sometimes these things happen. It suited both. Uh, both wanted it straight away. And look, as a promoter, you, you, you're in big fights. You got you're there. in very yeah. big fights. You got but there. this is an iconic fight. Well, I've got to say, I agree with you, but uh, my colleague, Mr. Jordan, somewhat lukewarm reception. Why, why, why so? Um, I'd expect nothing less. Well, that <laughs> this is it, Cali. You're not wrong. Am I right? Is this the last fight that Eubank's under contract with you guys to do? No, no, no. We have quite a few fights left. We have a multi-fight okay. deal. All right. about, about at least another three, four fights on there. I'm trying to work out how this steers into the narrative of what's best for both fighters besides a significant payday. Because you've got one fighter that fights naturally at 147, one fighter that fights naturally at 167. You've got both of them having to make significant compromises. You've got one guy that tells us forever and a day that he's going to fight for a world title in Chris Eubank Jr. and never seems right. to. Um, we've got another guy on a different trajectory at a different stage in his career. I'm trying to work out, besides obviously the Does connotation... Does Eubank Ben not give you a clue? Well, yeah, of course. That's the connotation that I was going about to put to Kelly. <laughs> this is Eubank Ben based upon their fathers. But if, if Chris Eubank loses, where does he go in terms of ever getting a world title shot? If Conor Ben at this stage in his career, who's going through the gears, who probably should be fighting David Avanesian or someone like that loses this fight. It stalls his career a little bit. I'm trying to work out how this is in the best interest of the fighters, besides, Callie, a big payday. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But you're an astute businessman, Simon, so you'll also understand we're there to max careers. They have a very short career. Um, this fight is something that will break box office records. We're sure of that. Uh, we're very Probably confident right. yeah. that. But I'll, I'll come back and address your question. Cool. So, first of all, Eubank is at 160, um, usually. If you look at the world title situation, and someone I know you're a big boxing fan, you see the hold up around the Golovkin mm -hmm. uh, situation. So he's holding basically the division at ransom at the moment, which is fair enough. He's dominated the sport for 10 years, but we can't really move. There's no movement there. The, uh, Mongoya, um, sorry, uh, Charlo has Mongoya uh, as, as a mandatory, I believe, next, which is something that's almost been done, I'm told. So we're really sitting looking at. at Waiting for the, the what about the Liam Smith? Of... Yeah, well, what what does Liam Smith do for us over over Conor Ben? With all due respect to Liam, I've worked. Well, a he's long a natural middleweight. Simon, you bang Junior Ben. You bang. Where's the where's, the where's the credibility in a it, relatively a, big it, middleweight bashing up welterweight if that's what but, he does? But we're there to to provide what the public wants as promoters, and would the public prefer to have Eubank Ben or Eubank Smith? Exactly. I think also are we exactly. missing are we missing a point well, here. I'm hearing you, Simon. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I'm no, I think we're both right, Kelly. I think we're both right, Kelly. I, I was just looking at thinking of it from the lads' point of view because what happens is you always have this self belief. I'm sure the boxers do as well. They don't contemplate the loss. They just think, give me that fight. Yes, it's a big payday. It also puts me on the map on a worldwide audience, and I'll show everyone what I can do, and that'll kick me on to bigger and better things. But it's also Great the point. It's a promoters and managers' yeah. job to recognise there's a possibility someone gets. If you yeah, get but then beat, you just pour in negativity. Chris Eubank, you, Junior, is done. 
If you get bashed yeah. up and get damaged but, because you're getting hit by a heavier middleweight in Conor Ben, then you're in trouble. But, but that's the ingredient, you would, Simon, that we we'll always say we want. Jeopardy. But then you would be on criticising... On, a, on, a, on, on a, a people of the same weight classes fighting in the same weight classes. But then you would, you, you, we would also sit here and criticise some fighters for ducking fights and not putting themselves out there and taking a risk to move forward and make even more. Yeah. I mean, Callie, you would but, say this but, fight but, sells but, itself and more. It will be, be a record, as you say, probably, you, in box Jim, office Jim, terms. Jim, Jim, you've just answered it for me. Look, you... Simon, Danny, sitting there in Crete. Yeah. You know, there's arguments, there's discussions. Yeah. That's what you want. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. We're talking about it. Simon's got an opinion. You've got an opinion. Yeah. Danny's got an opinion. We want fights that bring opinions. Yeah. Now, let's not forget the demographic on this. I'm 45. I This was the original one. was probably one of the fights where I fell in love with boxing as a teenager. So you're going to have those people shooting. You've got the people who are following the, the careers of, of, of Junior and Connor up to now, much younger demographic. Yeah. Is, so there, is there a very, rematch clause, Gally? And this is the interesting part. You'll have an exclusive here. No, there is not. And neither side, going back to what Danny uh, just said, neither side asked for one. Mm. It, it, uh, there was a lot of different points negotiated, but no side asked for a rematch. So both sides believe. Is it a multi caster fight? Sorry, say again. Is it a multi-broadcaster fight? Does it get carried no, on more than a, one platform? It's a one-off fight. It's a one-off fight. It's a it's a very special fight. So on what on what broadcaster? It's going to be on the zone on the zone pay per view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is your man confident he'll take care of business on the night? We are exceptionally confident. He's exceptionally confident, and you know I think I, but I do think it makes for a great fight. I do think I think that if you look at the styles, they'll gel. Um, but uh, we believe our man is the more experienced and uh, the stronger man. So I must you know, admit, Simon, the, the closer the fight gets, you, you, you hear Cali oh, talking about it. That's why he, when Ben and Eubank fought absolutely, originally, that's why he gets interested. I can absolutely hear the intrigue. I understand mm. the intrigue. I can see the pay per view. But if you look, if the boxing aficionados will look behind it and go, hmm, okay, it is what it is. This is Con, Connor Ben and. And Chris Eubank fighting under the auspices of their father's names, it will draw a lot of attraction. And it will be fascinating because he's going to have to do a damn sight more to keep Conor Ben off than he did for, um, for uh, yeah. the, the Welsh kid that he fought five, six months ago. I've got a rough idea. Both fathers will be paraded in the ring, will they? Be be beforehand? There's nothing in the contracts for that, but I'm <laughs> sure they'll both be able to support their sons, no doubt. Carla, brilliant. Listen, thank you so much. Carla Sarlin joining us live on the show, and it's happening. It's at the O2 here in London on October the 8th. It's Chris Eubank Jr. against Connor Ben. I tell you what, Danny, I, I, I will be all well, over my, this. My, I love it. My, you will, Simon, as well. I know you. You'll get involved in it. I, I just think that it's nonsense. Eubank Jr. has been sat in on this show nonsense. for the last 18 months telling everyone how he's going to a world title fight. What about this? Is a, and then we have to listen to what mansions you've got in Las Vegas. This is a money fight. No. I thought he was fighting for world titles. You're always telling us you've lived everywhere. Why shouldn't Chris Eubank do Yeah, Junior? but I hadn't told you that I lived everywhere on the back of of, of the things that I haven't done. As always with you, you've winning got world backing. titles. You've got backing. There's a fight fan. I agree with Simon on this. Makes good reading that Eubank Ben coming back, but it doesn't make good boxing sense. They'll probably get paid more for this fight than they will for the next two or three, wouldn't sure. they? I just, sure. think I just think Conor Ben is on a trajectory to win a world title, and I don't think he needs to take an L and get battered by Chris Eubank because he's a bigger fighter. I just think there's a risk there for Conor Ben. I don't care whether Chris Eubank wins or not because he's 32 years of age and all he ever done is talk about doing something rather than doing it. Whereas Conor Ben's trajectory is a completely different one. He's 24, he 25 might, he years of age. It'll be, it'll be a fascinating fight. Actually, I'm just getting breaking news from producer Luke. Both of them, Eubank Jr. and Ben, are going to be... In are be they'll be right here in the studio on Friday with Laura. So uh, Laura will be here. It means Laura's doing five days, is she? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.